welcome back to my channel. So as you can see today, I'm not in my home. I am in fact in Rome. <laughs> and I know you guys are gonna think, this girl's vlogging even on her holiday? Both Aaron and I were ill last week, which meant that Aaron couldn't complete his sermon for Christmas Eve. And obviously that's really important that he gets that done. Um, and so we're just taking it hour to get like away a whilst he can do his sermon and I thought I could do my video. Perfect. So whilst he's doing his sermon upstairs on the rooftop, I'm going to be doing my part two video to the Modesty segment today with you guys. I felt like I needed to share my Modesty video first before going into the whole um, addressing the scriptures aspect. And the reason for that is because I wanted to share with you that I, I have had to endure and experience growth in this area. This isn't something that comes naturally to me. This is something I've had to learn and be sanctified in. And I felt like that, per that personal kind of side of things, I really wanted to share with you guys first before bringing out the scriptures. Now today is a different kind of video because once again, I'm easing you guys in. I'm not just throwing it at you. I hope not, anyway. But this video isn't for condemnation. This video is, in fact, for just an encouragement and an awareness. So, with that being said, modesty can also be misunderstood. And I want to see both sides of the, the fence. So in this video, I'll be looking at what the Bible doesn't say about modesty. And then the next video after that, we'll be looking at what the Bible does say about modesty. Definitely both videos today, including scripture, of course. Without further ado, you know me and my numbers, right? I'm still fairly ill, guys, so keep up with me. I have five things that the Bible doesn't say about modesty, and I will be using scripture as well. So let's start with the first one. The first one, is the Bible doesn't teach that bodies are shameful and I've got some scriptures here in case you guys love a bit of scripture to back it up but Psalm 139 we're told that the human body is fearfully and wonderfully made there's also another verse that talks about our body being the holy temple and a representation obviously of God now with that being said how you treat your temple and how you view your temple and how you view how you reflect that onto others is completely your conscience and the bible doesn't say specifically that our bodies are shameful it does however say that they are sinful fleshly you know talks about the evidence of the flesh that is slightly different from our actual human body we shouldn't be like ashamed of what god has made that's the first point now it's a simple point but it's a point the second thing that i have picked up is the bible doesn't teach a dress code there is no specific set of your uniform for christians this is one scripture that i do want to bring up because people could say that this is a dress code i also want the women to dress modestly with decency and propriety adorning themselves not with elaborate hairstyles or gold or pearls or expensive clothes but with good deeds appropriate for women who profess to worship god now first of all for the christians that say you know god doesn't tell us to dress modestly this verse kind of debunks that god does tell us to dress modestly by saying i also want the women to dress modestly the key word there is dress, which means what you wear. This is a verse from Timothy. And what I want to focus on is it says, I want women to dress modestly with decency and propriety. So there's two things there, decency and propriety. Then shortly after, adorn themselves not with elaborate hairstyles. So we could say this is partial dress code. Partially, we could say that. Um, not with elaborate hairstyles so back in the day the women used to braid their hair like like kind of like i imagine the egyptians and adorn it with gold and pearls in their hair um and i've had a lot of people say so what i can't wear plaits 
I, in that context, I don't believe wearing plaits is um, seeking attention or validation. However, I do think if you're doing it for the wrong reason and you're doing it for attention, then that is something to check on. But for me personally, this is my own conscience, so judge your own conscience. I could wear my hair in plaits and not feel as though I'm adorning myself or like I'm doing it for other people's attention. It notices gold or pearl. These are fine things. These are like expensive things. So even in your hair, what you're adorning in, I guess we could say this is kind of a uniform-ish, but there isn't a set of rules for what to wear. This is just what not to wear. I'm gonna say it, there are cults that make you wear certain clothes to enter church. That is not biblical. There should be a code of conduct in how you act, how you behave, and in how like how you dress towards the Lord. That is that is biblical, you know, whether that should be, you know, examined. But to to say to women and to men, you have to wear this and you have to wear that is is man made. That isn't biblical. But that's my point. <laughs> the Bible doesn't have a dress code. However, it does have a code of conduct. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Moving on to number three. The Bible doesn't go along with the world's culture. And what I mean by that is I've actually put phrases that I may have heard or even said myself at some point in life, maybe before. Uh, for example, people that say Christian women can look good too and God knows my heart. These two phrases are an excuse to dress how you like. And this phrase, Christian women can look good too, and that's why you wear less. In order to feel good, why would you need to show your body? I, I, I don't really understand that. So when you say can look good too, are you saying that all the women that don't show their bodies don't look good? The understanding of trying to look good through wearing less isn't biblical but that is just one thing i've heard and picked up on and i've got a scripture do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of god what is good and acceptable and perfect that's romans 12 2. as i mentioned in my previous video you can easily be conformed um of your mind by social media your circle of friends, um, even your church you're influenced by and the people that are discipling you or other Christians around you can also influence you or other people around you can influence you and your decision and your ways of thinking. It's always good to rely on God first but I felt it was really important to not be conformed by the world's, you know, phrases and the world's culture and instead embrace God's way. That's it. Number Four. The Bible doesn't teach that we can blame others for our sin. When you choose to look at a woman with lust and you give in to that temptation, that is not the woman's fault. That is solely the man's fault. We'll use woman and man for example. Obviously it can happen the other way. It is not good to be able to shift the blame onto someone else and say, well it's because they wore that, that's why you led me to sin. You know? And it's not good that we say that you can't make your own moral choices. If someone is dressing immodestly and you do look in lust, you have a choice to be obedient to God and look away, or you have a choice to indulge and entice yourself and carry on. With that being said, as I wanted to be fair, we have to look at the church and we have to look at Christian women as a whole. And Christian women should not intentionally want to cause other Christian men to sin. That is if we know that something what we could wear could cause lust in a man's heart, then it's not wise or kind or loving to our neighbour to do that. So with that being said, there is two sides because the Bible also says um, to not cause someone to sin or to stumble. So there is that perspective as well. And we shouldn't intentionally or willingly want to do that. My neighbours just left. I'm gonna move on. The last one, number five. Immodesty doesn't warrant sexual assault. And this may be a really touchy and sensitive subject, so I understand if you guys don't want to continue watching as I'm gonna talk about certain areas of the Bible um, that do talk about sexual assault. So I'm just warning you now before I go into it. 
and this shouldn't happen amongst Christians however we are in a fallen world and I'm not naive to think that sexual assault doesn't happen I can't find anywhere in the Bible where sexual assault is the woman's fault and I found one example of where you guys know I was doing my study in Samuel as I was reading you know the story about Tamar and Amnon and Tamar was the sister and Amnon desired his sister and loved his sister so much that he wanted her and pretended to be ill to call his sister to be like to subdue her basically and David was furious which was if you guys don't know the story Amnon's dad <laughs> I'm saying it so casually brother of Amnon or Tamar was furious also when he heard this and these are both Jewish men so you can kind of tell by the way it was written in the Bible that this wasn't condoned and also the fact that they're siblings as well and the the manipulative side of this man of plotting to to assault his own sister was not viewed in the Bible as in a good light even in Deuteronomy it's one of their laws and I've got but if in the open country a man meets a young woman who is betrothed and the man seizes her and lies with her then only the man lay, who lay with her shall die she has committed no offence punishable by death for in this case is like a man of attacking and murdering his neighbour because he met her in the open country and though the betrothed woman cried for help there was no one there to rescue her it's just something to just highlight that sexual assault is not warranted in the bible and that you can't blame a young woman or a woman for what she wears as to why you assault and i'm i hope that i'm not speaking to anyone who says that and i just felt kind of led to share that part because i think it's also important that i don't hide certain things from youtube or from you guys because it is an important topic and it is you know something that i think should be shared that can happen it's entirely up to the person if they assault another person that is on their own shoulder that is on their own back it's a bit of a heavy one to end on um if you need prayer or anything about this topic or about this anything in this video or if you feel like sharing anything that could encourage your brothers and sisters down below let me know or let them know that is bringing us to the end of this video i hope you have an amazing day and a fantastic time and i'm gonna head back out to rome thank you guys for watching i hope you enjoyed this video bye